attitudes about inequality uh, immediately pre-crisis, before the collapse of Lehman Brothers, and post-crisis, after the uh, Lehman Brothers and the bailouts, um, they, they didn't change at all. People, they, they, the level of concern about the level of inequality, at least in the United States, didn't change at all, nor did uh, people's thoughts about what the, the level of regulation should be. The one thing that did change was the affect towards uh, big business. That is to say, people got very angry at big business, and so you see a market shift in the cold direction. Uh, so there was this, out in the public, there was a, a potential anger to take advantage of, but it was also a potential anger that animates many of the populist politics that we see nowadays. We can't explain why Americans uh, have this sort of very static view of inequality. Um, basically, their concern of inequality has absolutely been stable as inequality has been rising steadily in the United States. Um, and, you know, the question is, do attitudes really express what people are thinking inside? There may be other ways in which they're concerned about inequality that we don't get in our surveys. But for, for, for now, it seems to be a sort of uh, a, an abstract quality that's not connected to immediate surroundings. I don't know the European data as well, um, but certainly I, you're, you're going to get a, a more marked concern about uh, inequality. But we have looked at some data from the United Kingdom, um, and we see that concerns about inequality in an earlier period, sort of the, the, in, the, in the Blair, uh, first Blair government, actually declined. And so even as inequality was going up, um, or at least it measured in certain ways, um, the uh, concern about inequality was going uh, down. We think uh, from our research that, that mobilization is very important. Why is that? Because um, if you don't put pressure uh, on very highly resourced interest groups, which is what the financial actors are, then you're not likely to get any change uh, in the regulations. And so we saw this, uh, especially in the Dodd-Frank uh, bill in the United States, which was about trying to re-regulate the banks. And what, what happened, as oft so often happens in American politics, is you, you get a push to regulate, uh, pushed by President Obama and taken through Congress by um, Barney Frank uh, and Chris Dodd, respectively, in the House of Representatives and the Senate. Um, and then it kind of stalls on what's called a filibuster, where the Republicans were blocking it. Uh, and so a very wise uh, member of the, the Subcommittee on Investigations had a, if you like, a hearing, which was really an, an American conversation about uh, what went wrong in the financial crisis, in which he pulled out some emails uh, that, had, that he found about Goldman Sachs, in which uh, Goldman Sachs said, you know, this was one shitty deal. And so um, Senator Levin uh, asked Goldman Sachs executives, he pulls them all in front of him and says, so you guys were selling the shitty deal, uh, and you were pushing the shitty deal on your clients, and how much of this were you selling? He said, shitty deal about 20 times. Look what your sales team was saying about Timberwolf. Boy, that Timberwolf was one shitty deal. Mr. They sold that Mr. shitty Chairman. deal. And shitty deal doesn't seem like a very elegant thing for a senator to say, but it managed to crystallize this sort of affect that I was talking about, the sitting back in the population, uh, and suddenly you get a huge groundswell of anger against the Republican filibuster, and it collapses as the moderate Republicans say, we can't possibly be um, against public opinion this way. So that kind of mobilization switched banking regulation in the United States. Um, and if it hadn't happened, then we wouldn't have the sort of regulation that we have now. The, the, the canonical answer to this is Americans tend to think that theirs is a land of opportunity and they believe in the American dream. That is to say, um, anybody can make it and if there's great mobility, then who cares about inequality? Uh, one of the other members of the conference said something, Milton Friedman would assert this, you know, that, that if, that if I'm on top uh, today, but you're going to be on top tomorrow and I'm not, then who cares? It's all going to come out in the wash. Um, and many people say that uh, Americans have this view, even though we know that mobility is declining in American society. Uh, and so that's one possibility. But you, you also have to wrestle with the possibility that, that Americans tend to be very mistrustful of government. Uh, and so even if they may think that the level of inequality is not where it should be and it should be lower, um, they don't trust the government to deliver it. Uh, and so the views about inequality are kind of inchoate, uh, and, and I think there are several factors leading into why inequality hasn't yet become a major issue for the American public.